Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maureen O'Connor from Quilters Heaven in Northbrook, Illinois, and I am the Opinionated Quilter. In today's episode, I'm going to encourage you to make quilts your own, either by embellishing using applique or embroidery or changing the pattern itself to make it suit your purposes better. Make your own quilt, not someone else's. But before we get to that, let's get to my opinion. In a recent video I watched, a quilter was making a quilt called Four Star Generals Revisited. And she was making four units that looked like this. And what she did was she took four sets of half square triangles and then she cut them in half corner to corner and threw away the bottom half of each one. It was all waste. So the only portion she used was the top half. And what she was doing, as opposed to a combo unit that we would make in a, a Deb Tucker way, they would come out mirror images, but she needed non-mirror image uh, combo units. So what Deb Tucker calls non-mirror image combo units, and in this case, Color one is here, color two is here, color three is here. All four the same. And in order to do that, we can do it a better way. A better way than throwing away four halves of uh, half square triangles. You've actually wasted half of this, which if you've watched my channel at all, I can't stand waste. So let's show you the easier way. And we'll put a link to Deb Tucker's video on how to do this and in our comment section below. Um, she has a technique sheet that tells you how to do it. You also use her um, her tucker trimmer, which if you watch my channel at all, you probably already have one. And, and what you do is you take two, you need two squares of what is this portion, which makes sense because these are half square triangles. You need four of them. So you would need two squares to cut in half to make four of them. These are quarter square triangles. So you only need one square each of the other two colors. So you need four total squares. You take your two that are the quarter square triangles, put them together. And the way you get this to work is you draw lines on either side of the center and that's where you're going to sew. But you're not gonna sew all the way down one edge and all the way down the other edge. You're going to sew down, I put red marks here so you could see it a little easier. We use dark thread, but I've added the red so you could see. So you sew from here, cross over the center, sew down. You do the same on the other side. Sew down, cross over the center, sew down. And then you cut corner to corner and corner to corner. And what do you get? You get four units that look like this. Then you take your two squares of the half square triangle part, cut them in half, and then sew them together. Once you get them sewn together, you have four units that look like this. They're oversized. You use your tucker trimmer, line it up, cut, cut, rotate, line it up again, cut, cut, and you do that four times, you get four units. This is your amount of waste for one square, so yeah, one finished combo unit. So this times four is your waste doing it this way rather than half or essentially two full half square triangles and you only use two. So again, I think there's much better ways to do things. Critically look at how directions are written. And even if a pattern tells you to do something one way, many times there's a better way to do it. That's my opinion. Let's get to today's episode. There are so many things you can do to make your quilt your own. In this example of Norman Nanette from, from Elizabeth Hartman, 
I decided I wanted to make Norm's hat a stripe. In the original pattern, his hat is all one piece. So it's very simple. I just made um, strips of the green, strips of the red, and then used the pattern piece to cut out the hat. And I also decided I wanted to embroider his name on there. So that's one example of changing a pattern to make it your own. Also, this belt piece was all a solid piece. And since I used the red up here, I wanted to repeat it down here. So I did the same thing down here that I did up here creating a stripe. Um, also, I'm always looking for places to use those fancy stitches we have on our beautiful Berninas. They have a zillion stitches, and other than the blanket stitch, zigzag, serpentine stitch, and straight stitch, I don't use too many other stitches, so I'm always looking for a place to put it. And you may not be able to see it from here because it's a little distant, but I took a fancy stitch and used it at the top of his boots. And I was really pleased with that. It was fun. Nanette is up here because I made a change in her. Her uh, boot pieces, and uh, you may not be able to see that from here either, but this is a solid piece. What I did was I gave her high heels. I put a little black triangle on the bottom of these two pieces and now she had high heels. How fun is that? One last thing here before we remove the board. This is just a little door banner that I made up. It's got uh, foundation piecing. It's got Elizabeth Hartman's uh, bunny on it. I embroidered a bow tie on the bunny. The thing I want to show you is the use of another stitch. And that is at the bottom of my chicks. I used a triple straight stitch to make their feet. And that's just a great spot to use a triple straight stitch. I'm always looking for places to use that. And I did use buttons for the eyes. Buttons for the eyes for a door banner is A-OK, -okay, but don't ever put buttons or anything a baby can pull off of a quilt on a baby quilt because you don't want them choking. That would be horrible. Never use this on a baby quilt. Door banner, OK. Let's just remove this board so we can see what's behind it. Okay, some more examples of making it your own. I don't even remember the name of this pattern. I can't even find it in the shop, but I want it to be a door banner too. What I do remember about it is all these pieces were applique and I did not want to do applique. So instead of doing applique, I embroidered a snowflake up here. I embroidered eyes, a carrot, a mouth, and all these buttons I embroidered. Um, this is applique and this is applique. That was enough for me. But if somebody else follows the pattern directly, they're going to have a different quilt than I have. So I'm quite happy with this. That's my only non-Elizabeth Hartman one up here. These are both Elizabeth Hartman. And when I was thinking of doing this, um, this episode, I thought, why are all of the patterns that I'm doing Elizabeth Hartman's? I don't know if I like her patterns because they have lots of ways to embellish them and make them my own, or do I like her pattern so much I make them and then I find reasons to embellish them. Not sure which is first, the chicken or the egg. Here is her dogs and sweaters. And if you've seen the original pattern, they're plaid. They look kind of um, male dogish. Well, we did the opposite. We went girly girl. And so we put glasses on one, one bow up here, different bow here. And this one, I put a necklace on, and again, it's actually quite funny. It's the same stitch as I used on Norm's boots. But I made a necklace and embroidered an M and made a medallion on this one. So if someone follows this pattern, they're highly unlikely to get something that looks like this. So this would be unique, uh, making it our own. 
last one. I love this one. This is her awesome ocean. And as with all of Elizabeth Hartman's, I never quite make them the way they're supposed to. Here's the full pattern. Here's the one that's supposed to be the small quilt. Well, mine doesn't look like that at all. But what you will notice in mine is I have one whale going this way, one whale going this way. Same with almost everybody else. He's straightforward, so he doesn't change directions. This fish is in opposite directions. This fish is in opposite directions. Same with the seahorses. But take a look at the turtles. This is the bit major change I made. This is the first turtle I made. And you can see these arms are up and these arms are back. So he looks like he's flat on his belly with his arms up and his legs to the back. Well, I wanted to make him look like he was moving. So I flipped the direction of these two top legs. These go up, these go down. Not something anyone would really notice off the bat, but it made me happy. So in addition to changing sizes of blocks that we've talked about before, you can actually change the pieces of the block to make it more to your liking. And of course, I made way different numbers of uh, sea animals, ocean life here, than, than um, Elizabeth did in her pattern. But that's the fun of her patterns. You make the, the blocks you want to make, you make how many you want, you face them in the direction you want, and you put it together, and you get something unique. You've made it your own. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, happy sewing.